Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, another episode here on Fast Break Live on I Sports Radio. I wanted to talk to y'all about the last eight years for I Sports Radio. I Sports Radio has been bringing you the amazing contact range for interviewing legendary athletes to building tailor made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we have to continue to be by the fans, for the fans, and with your help, we're ready to take that next step. When you go to our website, iesportsradio.com, you'll see a Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just $5 a month. This donation gets you a shout outs on all 32 of our shows. Higher tiers include iesports Radio merchandise, access to our podcast at university, and even a chance to be featured on our segment of our flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all for very much for continuing to make iSports Radio your direct for you as far as for that is always sports. I want to shout out to our four Patreon members, Bay Area Rays, Marcus, Los, Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you for making our eight years special, and here's the many more years to come. And on to the show. Yes, I know we're going. We said last week we we're going to preview the Northwest Division, but some things happened in NBA news that we kind of had to bump up a certain division. So this week we're previewing the Atlantic Division. Please give us who y'all think will be the, at the top of the division, five through one, five being the lowest, one being the top. Plus the Ime Yukata situation. What's the fallout going to be from there? What's going to happen? Is the punishment fair? Did a lot of folks in sports being in over a rat? We'll discuss that and much more here on Fast Break, live on I Sports Radio. You're the red feed for all of sports, and you're welcome to join us. Jordan's asked you shout tonight. We are trying to do no long intro because, I mean, we, we really got to dive into this one. We really got to dive into this. We got other news we got to get into later on down the road regarding Robert Sauver. But D-Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I can barely hear you, D Lock. Can you uh, speak up a little bit louder? Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, that is better. Yes, I was just saying that we have a great, uh, it's great that we have this preview coming up with the news uh, that's coming around. So it's good that the NBA is basically back. Um, we're going to help the others with that, but there's a lot of news going on right now. Yeah, lots of news to get into, uh, lots of things. <laughs> Lots of things to talk about, but I think we're just going to hop into it. The Ime Yukata situation really took the NBA and sports world by storm this past week. Mind you, you know, this is and it's lapsing the news with Brett Favre taking state funds because he don't spend his own money for something to miss. You got the Herm Edwards help and Herm Edwards situation at Arizona State, where it seemed like the whole school was conspiring to get him out the paint. But no, Ime Yukata, Infidel the reign supreme here. And D Lock, as the days kind of go on, it seemed like It was just one lady to everybody. And this 
problem with the internet nowadays. Like they kind of rush to judge the race to be first, the race to find out who it was, what happened, all that stuff. Without trying to get all the facts. There was one lady that they accused that was like a personnel person on the team that wasn't that lady. And then after you kind of let things marinate, former sports uh, reporter, let me try to get the name right, Kevin Frazier tweeted out. But it was a lady that they handles the travel arrangements for the team. And the only reason this really got, she got caught, they got caught. The lady apparently was on the phone discussing the details of this said infidelity at her house. And the husband happened to hear the conversation, recorded it, and after that, everything kind of snowballed from there. The team was aware of it come July. Why are we kind of hearing about this now with the start of training camp just right around the corner? Yukata suspended for the whole year with the, get this, a prawn Board approval, whatever that means, if he can be brought be brought back or not. That's all we know so far. Other Celtic news. You know, Robert Williams having surgery, Donald Garnieri out for the year ACL. D Lock, what are your thoughts on this situation with Yukata and all that? Well, at first, uh, when it first initially came out about him basically breaking some team rules or violating some team rules or them considering, you know, suspending him, uh, had me thinking, well, what the hell could it be, right? Uh, I was thinking it had to be uh, some in the ballpark of relations, but I just, you know, you wanted to wait until you hear more of the story, more information. So when getting that, um, it seems like there's just a lot going on. I also think that there's more to the story as well. Um, and I think that that also means that we're going to hear more about, uh, I think we, the, the day, as days go, we start to learn more about this situation. Um, like you said, basically, uh, and being involved with, you know, somebody on the team. And the way I found that out is basically how uh, through uh, her husband um, and them, you know, having a conversation being recorded, uh, put everything on blast. Uh, it just seemed like this is a lot. Um, now, my biggest thing is they need to make a decision what they're going to do. I mean, I, like, it's like, the, are you, it seems like they're trying to suspend him to get him to resign. Um, that possibly wasn't an option. Maybe we don't know for sure. But it just seems like what they're trying to hint at is getting him to resign. Um, it doesn't look like he's, you know, wanting to do that. So I think the result of of him, you know, suspending him for a year is big news. But also I think it's going to take an impact on how this team performs moving forward. Uh, but this is just a lot, man. I mean, especially for it to be just a, a team rule, team violation, not necessarily involving the NBA front office. All right. <sighs> I'm going to say this first. To some of the women that got dragged by this unintentionally, they deserve an apology. Okay? A lot of people, lot of people speculate who is this and that, whatever. Don't make assumptions if you don't know. Secondly, it seems like the consistent report on this situation 
that it was a mutual consensual infidelity. Now, Celtics, I mean, the Celtics got rules, they got rules. And if you, and you know, since Yukata did this, he got nobody but blame for, for himself. A, it, it was dumb for him to do this. You finally got your first head coaching job. D Lock, years have we been doing this basketball show, I've been pushing for Coach Yukata. To be a head coach in his league for a very long time. I have. If y'all don't believe true. y'all don't believe me, check the archives. But I've been pushing for this brother to get a job for years. He's been an assistant coach for years. With Spurs, Philly, Brooklyn. I think I may have missed a team there. But this brother always deserved a shot. I always thought, you know, be on the pop. Be on that system. He has a good coaching tree. You figure he'll get a job. Goes to Brooklyn that one season. Really kind of helped that team. You kind of see how things kind of went back as a coaching wise for Steve Nash. Granted, you know, he lost Matt, Mike D'Antoni, but Yukata was another key piece he lost in that coaching staff. He gets the job at Boston. I said, okay. We talked about this. We liked it higher. We think he's going to do good things. First half of the season, so-so. Then I think they had a coming Jesus moment. Kind of changed some things around, especially defensively. Rolled that wave to the NBA Finals. Beat down a Brooklyn team that you know, probably wasn't all there. Had a lot of turmoil all year. We talked about that too. Beat a Bucks team that was down Chris Middleton. But still, they had Giannis, but you still beat them. Took seven games to beat the Heat, but you took care of them in seven games. And unfortunately, you came up short against the Warriors. Steph Curry, strong moments, had big games to carry his team to the top. And talk about this before. The sky's the limit for this team. You got Tatum and Brown, two young guys in the mid-20s. You got at least a good 10-year window right there. Of two high-caliber high caliber players... That I said at the at the time many months back that you should at least win a couple chips with those two guys. Cause if you look at the landscape of the league, Harden's in his thirties, Curry's in his thirties, Thompson in his thirties, LeBron getting older, is older. Davis Anthony Davis injury poem. Jimmy Butler's by thirty three. The Knicks are the Knicks. Durant, he's my around our age. I'm only with a person you gotta really worry about is like Giannis. Luca, yeah, possibly, yeah. John Morant, if he can stay healthy. But other than that, ain't ain't too many else unless another young guy steps up. And I just kind of hate. That he put himself in this situation. You got to know where you at. You got to know that these chances don't come easily. Not a lot of coaches can come into a, a ready build team and take them to the NBA Finals in this first year. Not many to- coaches can say that. I just hate how he did this to himself. And for the team as well. I just hate everything around it. 
And I'll say one more thing. I'll let you chime in and get back in this. <sighs> to like some of the female with uh, reporters and whatnot that chime in this situation. If a male does something inappropriate in the office, whatever, in high authority, not everything is like, I don't want to say bad situation, but the Yukata thing is just like an infidelity thing. And some folks, like, I, I ain't trying to shit on her, but like a Malika Andrews kind of really took her opinion over the top. And I was saying to myself, like, lady, it's a bad look on him. Yeah. It kind of it kind of sucks that this female lady, the female here, really hasn't suffered no punishment. We'll see her side of things. And it's, and it's kind of funny, D-Lock, that this same lady still arranged travel arrangements for Neil Long and whatnot to come to Boston. Knowing she was doing what she was doing. That's, <laughs> that's really ballsy right there. But, like, seeing some of these comments and some of these women wait, I quote tweeted from our Twitter account page on Fast Break and ISR. One lady trying to backhand compliment Becky uh, Hammond, saying she could have got the job instead of Yukata. I was like, what is wrong with y'all folks? Yukata and Hammond... Both got their jobs and kind of went into ready-made situations to, to lead their teams to championship uh, berths. Of course, Becky won. Yukata came up short. But don't backhand compliment her and why are you trying to throw him under the bus? And Yukata's been a coach at the NBA for much longer. Now, granted, that don't mean crap because we've seen guys like Derek Rich and Steve Carr and Steve Kerr get jobs right off the street. But for you females out there, don't use so much emotion in your opinions. You know, this ain't this this ain't like a Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby. You know, right. where else you want to throw in there? Type of situation. It's not that. So don't lump in Yukata with those guys. Type of dare. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. More bad for him. It's stupid by him. Stupid by her that she will continue this relationship and then so smile on the face of Neil Long at the process. She wrong for that too. But don't just come out here talking crazy. Relax, sit back. Don't try to overanalyze it and talk about it as the you know stories come about. Yes, I mean I think like I said, it kinda went you know we get a little bit of news. Uh Somebody hears something and they speculate. Um, and it's done multiple times, you know, in different stories. Uh, but, you know, when you, it's kind of like in these types of scenarios and situations, it's best to wait to hear literally everything yep. before you try to, you know, say something or comment. Uh, both men and women do it a lot. Uh, so, but it's just, you know, even, pretty sure people had speculations of how this information leaked out. Um, in fact, you know, there are many people saying, maybe, well, maybe it has something to do with, you know, the reason why they leaked out is because of how he treated whoever this, I mean, this this, this lady. Um, but clearly we have more information. So, uh, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, this situation and believe me, there will be more similar situations moving forward, not with just you know, celebrities and athletes, but just in general. It's better to wait and hear the story. 
um, been saying saying this what two times two sides of the story actually three sides you know one person one person the other person is in the actual truth <laughs> so uh, I think it's best that we uh, ask people I say it in all together is kind of wait till we get all the information we can before we start to jump to conclusions and assume and assume. Yeah, and shout out to the chat real quick. Tim Rodriguez, how you doing tonight, sir? Thank you for joining in. And shout out to Marcus Los, great. Thank you for joining in. Um, I, I agree, Marcus. It, it's more of a messy than a bad situation. It, it's messy. And then Marcus also said, you know, bad is sexual harassment or worse, rape. This guy had a relationship that was consensual, and when he's currently engaged to another woman. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think, you know, we talked before the air, you know, this country likes messy, you know, we like the gossip, we like the juiciness, men and women, it's just a, a thing in this country that we like, we like messy, and this is what What's happening here? Only thing I fought the Boston Celtics in. If you knew about this in July, why are you waiting to the start of the season to kind of do something now? And that's what I'm saying. Like it seems like all the information that we're getting is coming out now, leading into the season. You know, like a this situation, Robert Williams, Lonzo Ball, like all of this stuff. Why we? Why did? Why they couldn't approach all this stuff months ago? That's what, that's what, you know, makes me kind of confused, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. It's just like, y'all knew about this, you know, and, you know, it's, it's some folks saying, you know, reporting saying the Celtics didn't have an issue with it to the point they had, they, you know, they let that Paul E help Neil Long move to Boston. Now, is a year suspension warranted? Me personally, I don't think so. If it's in your uh, your uh, code of conduct, I don't have that in front of me from the Celtics. And maybe this is in, the, in their in their rule book about the, for the head coaches or coaches in general. But. But, you know, we, 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 I mean, ah, for a year, though, and you come off a finals run, and on top of that, the growth that you're supposed to have with your other guys, and Tatum Brown and Smart, Robert Williams, and then you gotta incorporate Malcolm Brogdon in the in the in the fold. Just a lot of messiness that should have been shored up by August. And now we're sitting here on November twenty fifth. Training camp about to start. The season starts next month. You know, we're about to preview the, the Atlantic division here. You're in a tough ass division. And you lose one of your key things, a head coach. It's going to hurt. Especially the guy on Aaron Williams being out with injuries. It's going to hurt. We don't know what the hell you're going to get out of Malcolm Brogdon. It's going to hurt. But before we uh, get to the previews, uh, I'll let you have the last word. Yeah, I mean, we already have different uh, scenarios going on. I mean, these are the type of things that uh, hurt a team to have them basically the exact opposite way. You know how you see these teams that have all these high expectations that you think they're going to have a great year, then it's like a domino effect. One thing happens, and then all of these other things start to fall after uh, so, you know, to be honest, it started with the Gallinari situation. Mm -hmm. um, 
And once that happened, it seemed like everything had just been going downhill uh, for the Boston Celtics. So, to me, now, because of the division that they're in, and we'll talk, um, I think they'll they can they'll be pretty decent as far as getting by, possibly getting in the playoffs. Um, but with these different things going on, and now a sudden coaching change, that's going to play a very, very huge part. A very, very huge part. So, uh, hopefully they can bring out a few things. Um, you had a highlight moment going to get a broad view, and then everything has been downhill since, since then. And D Lock, what's going to get this? You know, hop into the division preview real quick. I'll let you go first. Right. Five through one, who do you got coming out on top? Okay, so um, right now at five, uh, I got the Knicks. Um, going to get Jalen Brunson, cool. Uh, but outside of that, I don't see no major. Major, major improvements. I see this team being very similar. Um, now that you have that guard, Evan Fournier is showing how inconsistent he can be. Yep. So, I don't think that changes. Um, the biggest thing I want to see this year, to be honest, with the Knicks, is I want to see more out of Mayo quickly. Um, I want to see him play more, be more aggressive, and see what he can do. Uh, I think they got the guy from Toronto. I think he was with Detroit. His name is Spray. I'm sorry if I put your name. It's Faye Mahalik. Uh, another shooter, basically. Uh, so I think that's going to help. You ain't got Isaiah Hartstein, other big. Um, but with the core guys that you have, um, it's going to be very similar to last year. Uh, so I just see more of what Jalen Brunson did, to be honest with you. I think they possibly, he asked me, I think they overpaid for Jalen Brunson. That's just my opinion. Um, but we'll see how that pans out. Still have Derrick Rose in the books. So he's going to get his minutes. Um, but like I said, I didn't see a major, major improvement for me uh, to move them up in this division. Uh, so I got them at five. At four is when it gets kind of tough. You start to look at these other four teams are kind of very, I think they're much closer <laughs> than the Knicks. But I got to tell them about Toronto Raptors being at four. We've seen what Scotty Barnes looked like last year. I mean, he looked Look like he could be one of the better better players in the league for a very long time. Uh, we know what Van Fleet is, uh, but it seems like Pascal Siakam has not been the same since they won the NBA Finals. Um, to me, I feel like it, like, because I believe Ron Vendor was playing more so the four in the three position, but now they're bumping him down to that five. Uh, and I don't really see too much depth after the, their core guys are Van Fleet, Gary Trent, another D, Scotty Barnes, and Siakam. You know, I know you got both sure. Wynn picked up a Otto Porter. Uh, pressure cool if he get his minutes, but there's nothing out after that. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how many of you guys play uh, Fan Duel or DraftKings, but if you do a lot of optimizing with your team and Toronto is playing, Malachi Flynn was literally in every lineup last year. And he was <laughs> with a high expectation of points, and he would never do anything uh, to that expectation. So this team is uh, – I think they went and grabbed Hunter as well. He got that issue, you know, so he got some pieces. But it's just not not a huge, huge improvement to me. Um, I don't see them making a drastic change. Um, I think Scotty Barnes would, would be more uh, – I think he'd be a much better player. Uh, another B is one of those players that's very inconsistent – on the offensive side, but play defense. He's kind of that 3 and D, you know, to me. That's what I kind of see him as. I think he would fit in a, in a, on, a, on a different team. But it just seems like that's his role here. And going to grab an auto porter seems like something you're getting very similar as well out of him. So I got them at four. Um, I don't see them making that big, big jump, uh, especially out, you know, in front of the other three, other, these next three. So at number three, I got Boston. Now, if you would ask me this question, actually, if we didn't get this information, then maybe I would have them higher. Um, or if the information that we've been getting as far as Robert Williams, Gallinari, and now the coach. Those are huge pieces. Um, Iman is one of the better coaches in the league, and we've seen that last year. Uh, this is a very young team. 
can do so much. You went and got a Malcolm Brogdon, which I think think was a hell of a piece. You had plans, and you did have plans to, to play Gallo a lot, but clearly he has this situation going on. Um, but with these few news, these this news as far as Robert Williams, uh, Gallo, Iman, like, this has me brought back, have them brought back. Now, they're in a, a, a division where even with those missing pieces and situations, they're better than New York. They're better than Toronto. Uh, but they still got the top dogs in Brooklyn and Philly there. So um, I think that's when it gets kind of crazy between these three as far as who's at the top. Uh, but, yes, Marcus Smart was defensive player of the year, but his offense is not – there's no – his offense is non- is non-existent. So uh, for me – and going to get a prize, and hopefully, if he can stay healthy, uh, he can help. But also, that's another thing that can add on to this list of things that that Boston has. So I have them at three, um, and we'll, and these other two is the ones that I think takes the cake. So at number two, I got the Philadelphia 76 Ooh. Tyrese Maxey again. I mean, you went and got a D'Anthony Melton. You went and got a P.J. Tucker, so you tighten up on defense. Got your thing, your house. Kind of a Houston in Philly um, right now. Got a Montrez, who I think is a hell of a player off the bench. I'm still, for me, I feel like Tyrese Maxey is a better player off the bench. I feel like he can be a great player in the six-man role. I want to see James Harden run that, that offense. You know, him and... and uh, and be me personally, I feel like Tobias is too small to play power four. But this is a different league, you know. It's like a smaller league. So uh, you got your rotational guys in the Daniel House, a PJ Tucker, Matthias Thibel there. Um, I like those guys. Um, but if they can find the right rotation with them, uh, like I said, I think that Tyrese Max is still on the second unit. I think if they do make that transition, I think they'll be something, you know, they'll be much better than expected, although it did just sign the Anthony Melton, so it's highly unlikely that that's going to happen. But I do see Embiid as being uh, in the running again for MVP. Now, I don't think we see him as much being the fact that you have Montrez Harrell on this team. Uh, So he's going to give Embiid that rest that he needs. Uh, The biggest thing we know about Embiid is staying healthy. Uh, That's what he has to do. Um, but also, I need to see James Harden make that huge step. Um, he doesn't look like the same player that he was in Houston, or hell, even in Brooklyn. Um, so for me, I want to see him make that huge step, and I think what will kind of force that and emphasize that is having Tyrese Maxey come off the bench as your sixth man. Uh, so I do have them at the two. And obviously, number one, I have the Brooklyn Nets. Right now, we do have the Kevin Durant situation, wanting to be traded, Kyrie situation, you know, basically knowing that he's going to leave, uh, his off-the-field issues and off-the-court issues, which will always be there. Uh, but this this team is talented with these two on the court together. Um, that alone, I think, puts this team at the top of the division. Uh, the only team that's really felt like they can really compete with them prior to the, the, situ- the situations with Boston. Um, but I think that this is going to be a hell of a season for Brooklyn. If they can get out, if they can get over the offseason issues, I think this team is going to be very good. Um, that's not adding in key pieces like a TJ Warren and a Russell Neal. Uh, I think those are huge pieces to add on and now you're getting a healthy Ben Simmons. So you're, add, you're spicing up, you're adding up some defense. And you can get you got two guys that can score from damn near anywhere. So uh, now I think who's going to have to step up big this year is Nick Claxton. You know Drummond is gone. Um, I think that if he can step up big, uh, you still got Seth Curry and Joe Harris. So you got your three guys, your three point three point guys, um, and then hell hell you even got Cam Thomas who can come off the point, come off the you know, the bench and get you some points if you need to keep that energy going. So this team is loaded again. I mean, obviously it starts with the guys of a Kyrie and Kevin Durant. 
this roster is, is still loaded. So hopefully these guys, you know, they can get their head out their ass and get this rolling. I mean, you have two guys right now who can score anytime they want, and you have a lot of defenders on this team now. Adding a Marquis Morris who, you know, he brings that physicality, which is what they really missed uh, down the stretch last year. So um, I think this team is going to be a big problem for uh, not only this division, but the East and the rest of the NBA. So for me, I got the Knicks at five, Toronto at four, uh, Boston at three, Philly at two, and the Nets at one. All right, for me, real quick, going to knock these out. Mark is saying, did the Knicks phone bag with Donovan Mitchell? Well, let me get to the Knicks. I got them number five. I got a starting lineup of Jalen Brunson, Fournier, Barrett, Randall, and Mitchell Robinson. My main key questions for them, can the, the uh, left-handed shooters, can they lead them? lead the Knicks back to playoff contention. Meaning Barrett, Randall, and Brunson. Brunson signing, I didn't mind too much. I think, you know, they tried other guys to point guard, didn't work out. Went and got Brunson. He cashed in pretty good. So we'll see how that works out for them. Fournier, I even at the time they signed, they gave him a lot of money. And he, like you said, has always been inconsistent. He'll have a good game here and then have seven bad games right behind those. Um, I'm real curious what they do with the, the draft picks they accumulated in the past uh, this past year's draft and what they do with those. And they also grow from progress of Obi Topton, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes that they really didn't want to give up for for Donovan Mitchell. And for me, to mark this question, yeah, they fumbled the bag on, on uh, not getting Mitchell. Uh, I, I I didn't want them to get the farm from him. And I think I think it's more of a question, Danny Ainge. I, did you get trying to get too greedy to get conversation for uh, Donovan Mitchell? So you know, time will tell it would be, it would be the right move or the wrong move. You know, do you not? Did you not try to make a move? Because now you look at Cleveland. They are better with Donovan Mitchell in the fold. So, I don't know. It's it's really hard to say. We'll, we'll see how the season plays out. And I think also, and I'm a, a key question, a couple key questions for the Knicks. Can Randall have a bass back here? Can he really expand on his game? I know he, he's strong down the middle of his left hand. But he, can he work on his right hand and go to the other side? That's another question. And then also, is will Tom Timido be on the hot seat? That's something to keep your eye on right there. Number four, the Raptors. I got a starting lineup with Fred Van Fleet, uh, Trent Jr., and New Boy. I, I ain't nobody. I, I, I'm sorry if I butchered his name. Scotty Barnes and pass out Siakam. The way this team is constructed, they just want to be long and athletic. And I worry if they don't have a playmaker to kind of set up these guys. Van Fleet is solid, but he's not a setup man. He's more of a two guard. To be honest. A combo guard. And I, I, I worry about that. And also, they lack of shooting as well. They don't got that real threat to hit threes on a consistent basis. And yeah, you can say Trent Jr., you know, and Van Fleet. But outside of that, who else you got? So this team is going to really... Uh, Really bank on their athleticism, you know, long arms, and especially for defense as well. But I just got that number four because who's gonna make, who's gonna make plays for y'all? Who's gonna be the setup man? 
So that was a legitimate question for the Raptors. Number three. And I weighed heavily on this. The Boston Celtics. Reason I got number three, like you alluded to. I question why Robert Williams had surgery so late. If he knew you're going to have surgery. I know you're going to try to wait out and rehab and stuff like that. But similar to him and Lonzo Ball, why y'all waiting so long? Go and get the surgery, get it corrected, and and come back sooner than than you supposed to. Now you got Robert Williams that potentially be out for a couple months, and you really have no real depth behind him. Gallinari got hurt playing uh, the European um, Championships. He's gone for the year, and he was a guy I was looking forward to seeing on this team because. As you watch in the playoffs and finals, they could have used some extra scoring when guys like Brown and Tatum were off. You know, guys like um, Greg Williams, you know, if he's not on his A game, then he's not really, I mean, doing nothing else and getting in foul trouble. You need another good scoring option off the bench. I think he would kind of fill that role nicely. Now he's gone. And then, like we had this argument with the, I had some of the Boston Celtics fans over the summer. Yeah, Malcolm Brown is a nice addition if he can stay healthy. If he can't stay healthy, then good Lord, good. Thank goodness y'all still got Peyton uh, Pritchard still on the staff. I mean, still on the uh, roster. Al Horford's older. Marcus Smart, he's fine in spurts, but he's not like a playmaker. You better hope Brockman can stay healthy enough to be that dude. If not, I still say the Celtics do make the playoffs. And the Yukata situation damn sure don't help at all. And I wonder... And it's going to be real interesting what they do. Like you mentioned. they Are they going to try and play the long game and, ha- and make, have see this dude resign? But I don't think he's going to do that. And the interim coach. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to pull it up. Let's see. What's this dude's name? Uh, uh, Joe Mozilla. You know, another brother. You know, we'll see how... We'll see how he does. But if they expect the same results and stuff like that with this dude, I don't know. And and people saying, you know, Coach Yukata's coaching career is over after this. Head coaching career is over after this. I, I, I'm not the one to say about that. But I also said this on this show multiple times. A lot of retreads get hired in this league. I just say that. A lot of retreads get hired in this league. If he decides to step down or whatever, he'll get picked up by some team. They'll straight up tell him, hey, man, don't do this. Stay clean for a year or so. And he probably get picked back up. Because you already showed for one year that you can lead a team to the NBA Finals. You can't take that away from him. That's true. You, you, you can't. So I'm looking around the league. Team like the Charlotte Hornets. Teams like the Detroit Pistons. The Atlanta Hawks. And we'll see what happens to the Chicago Bulls. And the New York Knicks. Mind you. Brooklyn Nets. 
mind you. Um, but I just th throwing some of these teams out that could be looking at different head coaches down the line here within one, two years. I'm just saying. He'll get hired again, like Marcus said. He'll get hired again. To me, retreads get hired again. We talk about like Steve Clifford, uh, Rick Carlisle, Jason Kidd. Tom Thibodeau. Y'all get my point. He'll get hired again. But I think his presence, the other two players I highlighted being gone for a good while, is going to hurt them in the standings. But I still say they're a playoff team because of Tatum and Jalen Brown and Smart. Number two, real quick, the Brooklyn Nets. I got a starting lineup of Kyrie, Joe Harris, if he's healthy, Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, and Nicholas Claxton. Well, I look at this roster. So I try to figure out who will start for this team. How are you going to... I, I try to figure out the pieces because you signed T.J. Warren, who's starting, starting cal caliber, and then you, you, you can easily swap him in, out for Joe Harris. You got Rose and Neal, a good 3 and D guy type of guy. But it's just kind of real hard to kind of find a right starting five. And I think this is the best bet because you got Harris for your outside shooting. Real good shooter if he's healthy. If Kyrie and Kevin put that put their BS behind them and focus on the season, I think it'll carry the team a long way. And I also said this earlier in shows and I think a month ago. So we'll go. Very low key, nice additions. And getting Royce O'Neal and TJ Warren. You still got Patty Mills, Steph Curry in the fold. And I think, you know, the main thing is Ben Simmons, what he's going to look like coming out the gate. Because he got a lot to prove this year. A lot to prove. And I think another thing, a couple things here. Steve Nash, yeah, he got the vote of confidence along with Sean Marks, but if things go wrong, Steve Nash would be the first one showing the door, not Sean Marks. So Steve Nash, he got to come out with his A game. If not, he'll be gone. Secondly, there were two rookies they drafted a year ago. Cam Thomas, uh, Sharp, kid from North Carolina. That gotta be, they got to be figuring more in the rotation somehow. This is like two guys, two role players down the road that you should be depending upon come next year when some of these other guys' contracts go out. So I'd like to see more progress for these two young guys this upcoming year. And number one for me, Philadelphia 76ers. My star not for them, I got James Harden at point guard. We have a DeAnthony Milton at two guard. Tobias Harris at the three. P.J. Tucker at the four. And Joel Embiid at the five. I think you put the ball in Harden's hands. Let him, operate, let him operate that way. I thought about Tyrese Maxey there, but I was like, Ugh. I think you, you can maximize your lineup better with this crew. And then on top of that, Montrezl Harrell, Maxey off the bench. You know, uh, I forgot the one guy's name, the defensive guy. Uh, name slipped my tongue. But you got him off the bench as well. Uh, never uh, guard uh, from Turkey. I forgot his name as well. But you got those guys off the bench. I think you'd be straight right there. You're more tougher. 
tougher there. You hope Harden can bounce back. Past couple years hasn't really been nice to him. Uh, can Doc Rivers, you know, seeing what been going on in the division with the Boston Celtics situation, with Brooklyn Nets, you know, up in the air, the Knicks being the Knicks, you know, can he take advantage of this division and really kind of separate himself from the pack? And he really got to do that. If he can't do that, I don't know about Doc. And also, Embiid's health too. Uh, if he can stay healthy for most of the year, if he get if he get if he can give you a good seventy games, that'll be perfect for the uh, 76ers. Because, like I said, you got hair on the fold. I think that will help a long way. And I think if Harden Harden's back in MVP form, I think that will help go a long way for this team as well. So my playoff teams for this division are the Sixers, Nets, Celtics, and Raptors. You know, can it can the Knicks sneak in for the playoff um, playing game? Good possibility, but I, I think for the Knicks, it depends how Randall plays, how Brunson plays. You know, can he shake off that? I signed a big contract with New York, stink, and I, I don't play well. Can he shake that? Yeah, that's my thing. I mean, like I got I think he's a a very good player. I just there's a lot of high expectations with him, especially now that he's in New York. So that's my five there. The Knicks at five, the Raptors at four, Celtics at three. Brooklyn at two and Philly at one. With the Sixers, Nets, Celtic, Raptors going to the playoffs. Any last word there, D Lock? Uh yeah. I mean I'm I'm and we basically got very similar, I think it's except uh one and two. Um and like I said, I, I think that Kind of shot that she had um, Harry Max come off the bench. But, I mean, we agree there. I just feel like Six would be a better team if he were to be the six man uh, role player. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think that this division is pretty deep. Um, now, the team, the team, like I said, that, like you said, that's going to be close to making the playoffs. It's going to make it even tougher is Toronto. Uh, that's the team that has me kind of. Like, you know, can they win enough games or can they be in the hunt down down the road? Um, but it does depend on, you know, the leaders in Van Fleet and Siaka. Uh, so, but like I said, I think this is a, a hell of a division. But the biggest thing that impacted this division is all the news that Boston has <laughs> going on, both on and off the court. And it kind of, it's kind of sad that it's like that. It really is. But, you know, we'll see how things shake out. You know, train cup is right around the corner. You know, more news. I mean, more news have been coming out around the league. I know we have really touched on the Robert Soffer situation. We'll discuss that when we do the Pacific preview. And then plus Jay Crowder as well being not reporting train camp come Monday. So, a lot of things kind of happening around training camp and all that stuff. So, we'll dive into that stuff when uh, when the uh, show approaches it. But this has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in with us. Next week, we're, we are going to do the Northwest Division. So, we kind of pushed this one up. We kind of had the land division kind of lower before the season start. But since all that news happened... We kind of had to push. To be right on it. We, we kind of had to push it up, be right on it. But D Lock, how can people find you on social media? Black Dash eight one three on both Twitter and Instagram. Black the word dash 
You can follow the show at Fast Break at IESR. That's Fast Break IESR. Also, do follow iSportsRadio.com for all your latest news and and show uh, times as well. Do uh, support us on Patreon. You go to the link at iSportsRadio.com. See the Patreon link. Donate what you can. And please uh, support the network. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Spawn4288. That's Spawn4288. Also, I do another show to the side called The Crooks Process. You can follow that show on Instagram and Facebook. I, I haven't posted an episode here lately, but I do give little three-minute videos of my thoughts on certain things. I just did a video today talking about the Titans win against the Oakland, I mean, not Oakland Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders today, Moon to One and Two. So do check that out on Facebook, Instagram, The Crooks Process. You'll see the CP logo uh, at the profile pic. But tune in, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, Northwest Division next week. You know, breaking news, we'll talk about it on next week's show or talk about it through Twitter or whatever. But tune in, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk to y'all later. And we'll see you on the other side.